The following is a consideration of several personalities involved in MKUltra in the 1950s. Alan Dulles and his brother John Foster Dulles designed the CIA for Clark Clifford, the author of the National Security Act of 1947. Alan Dulles had been the top OSS agent, the precursor to the CIA, in Switzerland, Switzerland during World War II where he met frequently with Nazi officials and monitored United States investments in Germany. He held an executive position with Standard Oil. The Dulles brothers were both partners in the Wall Street firm of Sullivan and Cromwell, still today the most powerful firm of its kind. John Foster Dulles was Secretary of State for Eisenhower, while Alan Dulles was head of the CIA. The CIA under Alan Dulles overthrew numerous elected governments, most notably the governments of Iran and Guatemala. These operations were executed under the premise of anti-communist revolutions, but were in fact due to, these, to threats these governments posed to American economic interests. Alan Dulles was fired by President Kennedy in 1961 after the failed Bay of Pigs invasion of Cuba. Alan Dulles later became the lead investigator of the Warren Commission. Dr. George Estabrooks was one of the world's leading authorities on hypnosis, publishing numerous books on the subject. During World War II, Estabrooks, Estabrooks claimed to have used hypnosis to create an unwitting courier. United States soldiers were hypnotized, and a second shell personality was created and was given a detailed message to repeat to their contact. The soldier reported to their contact was hypnotized again and gave their secret message. The couriers themselves were unaware of their mission and could not knowingly divulge the contents of that message. Esther Brooks stated that this and other mind control programs were operational during the Second World War. Esther Brooks envisioned an elaborate infiltration operation of a foreign government targeting key individuals who could control the course of events in that nation. Mind control victims could be placed in key positions and could be controlled without their being aware. Assassins were programmed to kill and would do so on demand and retain no memory of the act or the source of their motivation. This was verified by an MKUltra sub-project that put two 19-year-old girls under hypnosis, convincing one of the girls she was to wake her friend and when she did not wake to pick up a pistol and shoot her. The girl did exactly that under hypnosis and denied the deed when she was brought out of hypnosis and told what she had done. The pistol during this exercise was unloaded. Dr. Ewan Cameron was president of the American and Canadian Psychiatric Associations, which made him one of the most influential psychiatrists in the world. He ran the Allen Memorial Institute, which was founded in 1943 with funds from the Rockefeller Foundation. Nazi paperclip scientists made their way into the CIA and military-sponsored mind control programs from here in the United States, both here in the United States and Canada. Some of these scientists, according to Colonel L. Fletcher Prouty, were friends of Dr. Cameron. Quote, if you get a hold of a directory for the American Psychiatric Association in and around 1956 or 1957, You'll be surprised to find that enorm an enormous percentage of the individuals listed are foreign-born. Mostly they came out of Germany and Eastern Europe in a big wave. They were all called technical specialists, but really they were psychiatrists. They went into jobs at universities mostly, but many were working on these unconventional mind control programs for U.S. intelligence. These would go to people like Dr. Cameron in Canada. Close quote. Money for Cameron's operation came from the CIA funneled through Cornell Society for the Investigation of Human Ecology. The systematic annihilation or depatterning of a subject's mind and memory was accomplished with overdoses of LSD, barbiturate sleep for 65 days at a stretch, electric shock therapy treatment at 75 times the recommended dosage, psychic driving was the repetition of a recorded message for 16 to 20 hours a day to program the empty mind. The Canadian government settled a class action lawsuit by 250 former patients of Dr. Cameron decades later 
but no person or institution has ever been disciplined or punished for these activities. Lyndon MacDonald was 25 years old in 1963 when Dr. Cameron treated her for postpartum depression. She received 102 electric shock treatments, 80 days of drug-induced sleep, and emerged completely depatterned, essentially like a newborn, totally incontinent, unable to state her name or recognize her husband and children. She had to learn, relearn how to drive, cook, read, and use the toilet. Eventually, unlike many patients of Dr. Cameron, she made a fairly complete recovery. Cameron was the premier psychiatrist of the 20th century, and having studied Nazi scientists at the Nuremberg trials, replicated many of their methods and sought their assistance in the race to control the human mind. Cameron's mind control experiments were one program out of many programs run by the CIA, Navy, Air Force, Army, and others. Although many parallel operations were occurring in the U.S., none of them were ever discovered or prosecuted. These programs were run by the likes of Morse Allen, Dr. L. Wilson Green, Martin Orne, and Stephen Aldrich. These and other American and foreign-born programmers were supervised by Dr. Sidney Gottlieb. Dr. Jose Delgado came to Yale University in 1950 and received CIA funds through the Office of Naval Intelligence. He perfected the Stemoceiver, an electric brain implant used to transmit electrical impulses directly to the brain, one version of which uses a radio signal to remotely deliver electrical stimulation to the brain. In one experiment, Delgado remotely stimulates the brain of a normal 11-year-old boy who becomes confused about his sexual identity and proceeds to tell Dr. Delgado he wants to marry him. In 1975, Delgado published Two-Way Communication with the Brain that explained his success at linking the implants directly to computers with quote, the ability to perform simultaneous recording and stimulation of brain functions, thereby permitting the establishment of feedbacks and on-demand programs of excitation with the aid of the computer, unquote. This allowed, quote, long-term EEG in unrestrained patients, provided information directly to the brain, circumventing normal sensory receptors. Communication from the brain to computer and back to the brain. Clinical applications to humans of on-demand programs of stimulation triggered by predetermined electrical pattern. By the 1980s, Delgado emphasized changing brainwave patterns and physiology through electromagnetic broadcasting that could be utilized at up to three kilometers. In an interview, he stated, quote, this new knowledge is so important that I think it, is, it should radically change the philosophy of our education system, which believes in the sanctity of individuals, thinking that an individual exists at birth. This belief is not true, and this science is going to prove the fallacy of democracy in the sense that we talk about the rights of the individual. This democratic belief is not true. Looking into the future, it may be predicted that telerecording and telestimulation of the brain will be widely used." MKUltra in the 1960s and 1970s was under the purview of Richard Helms, who ran the Dirty Tricks Department after the Bay of Pigs and became the Director of Central Intelligence in 1966. He destroyed the archive on MKUltra when he left the CIA in 1972 and successfully covered up the crimes of MKUltra. Helms was the product of the Eastern Establishment. His grandfather was president of the Federal Reserve and had interviewed Hitler as a UP reporter. Helms, in the tradition of Gottlieb, was a Machiavellian character who used paperclip scientists and would stop at nothing to win the war against the USSR. He advocated low-intensity warfare, transmitting strategic subliminal messages to the brains of enemy populations, and the use of high frequencies to affect memory 
and the unconscious mind. In a 1964 memo to the Warren Commission, he mentions, quote, biological radio communication. Cybernetics can be used in the molding of a child's character, the inculcation of knowledge and techniques, the amassing of experience, the establishment of social behavior patterns, all functions which can be summarized as control of the growth processes of the individual." Unquote. 